resource group, Microsoft Intro ID and conditional access are some of the services some of the Microsoft Azure concepts that as an Azure administrator, you will be working day in and day out. And thus, it is super important that you really understand and get into the core of these concepts. Of course, there will be multiple questions in the AZ-104 exam. There will be loads of questions on these concepts in the interviews that you are going to face. Here comes the very first question for today. So let's begin the part 43 with a wonderful question, question number 241. Please read the question along with me, try and understand there is loads of information given in this question. So let's read it out. It says that you have an Azure subscription that contains the resources as shown in the following table. So first of all, we are given with the RG1, which is resource group. Then we have VNet, which is virtual network one. Then you are also given with the resource group, which is applicable. Of course, this is the resource group. So this is not applicable. And the VNet one is under the RG6 or the resource group. What are the tags? We have the tags for the RG1. We have no tags. And then for the VNet or virtual network, we have tags as department and D1. So this is the key and this is the value for the tag. Coming to next part of the question, it says that you assign a policy to the RG1 as shown in the following table. So remember RG1 is connected with the virtual network 1 and in this table, it tells you what is the scope of this uh, uh, policy. So we have the scope given here, uh, scope which is exclusion, then value is also given. We have the section as basic. So what is the policy definition and assignment name? And then we also give one with the parameter. So tag name, label and tag value as value one. Now further the question is saying you that to RG6, you apply the tag RG group RG6. So once again, uh, name and value and you deploy the virtual network named VNet2 to the RG6. Which tags apply to the VNet1 and VNet2? To answer, select the appropriate option in the answer area. So let's check out the options. So first of all, we have VNet1, virtual network 1 and the tags given are none, department D1, department D1 and RG group RG6 only. Then we have department D1 label, uh, the value is value 1. Then we have department D1, RG uh, group or the resource group, resource group 6 and label as value 1. So let's check out the correct answer for this one and the correct answer is department D1 and label uh, value one only and the reason is that because the vnet inherits the policy tag which is like label value one it keeps the existing tab which is the department d1 and inherits the direct tag applied to the rg6 which is the rg6 group so that is why this is the correct answer coming to the vnet2 here we are given with none rg group uh, rg6 only label value one only and rg group rg6 and label as value one and the correct answer for this one is label value one only reason being that the vnet2 inherits the policy tag which is label value one and also inherits the direct tag applied to the rg6 rg group rg6 so that's why this is the correct answer it's a tricky question i would say this is more like a scenario based question so please understand this question very well you have loads of uh, information uh, given in this question you have to understand what is the uh, inheritance rule for the tags how does the policy work on the rgs and then only you will be able to answer this question and in case my friends you are new to the world of cloud computing and want to know what are the highest paying cloud computing jobs in the year 2025 and how to prepare for them what are the certifications you need whether you are a beginner intermediate or advanced what is the preparation that you need to do whether you love the programming or not then please watch these two videos where i have given each and every detail for 22 job roles and not just that i have evaluated each of the job profile on multiple critical parameters and also given you all the knowledge in these videos for you to get prepared for these job profiles and do not miss to watch the next episode in the ez 104 exam preparation series where I'm going to take some really twisted questions 
which will explain the concepts that probably you have not worked and you will not pass the easy 104 exam and please do moving on with the question number 242 it says that your company has two on premises server very interesting question this is going to be named srv01 and srv02 and the developers have created an application that runs on srv01 now the application calls the service on srv02 by the ip address and you plan to migrate the application on the azure virtual machine and you have configured two azure virtual machine on a single subnet in an azure virtual network you need to configure two virtual machines with the static internal ip address what should you do <laughs> loads of information once again let's look at the option option a run the new azure rm vm config powershell cmd let then we have option b run the set azure subnet powershell cmd let option c modify the vm properties in the azure management portal and then option d modify the ip address in the windows network and sharing center and lastly run the set azure static vnet ip powershell cmd let let me tell you the correct answer then we will break down the question so the correct answer is this one run the set azure static vnet ip powershell cmd let so let's first break down the question first of all let's understand what are the scenarios here first of all you have two on premises servers sr v01 and v02 then the application on the sr1 calls a service which is on sr v02 by the ip address that you can read here now you plan to migrate this setup to the azure virtual machine and you have configured two virtual machine on a single subnet in a azure uh, virtual network what is the requirement actual requirement of the question well you want to configure two virtual machine with the static ip addresses now let's once again look at the options given here the first one given here let me try to make you understand now this cmd let this first option a i'm talking about this cmd let is used to create a new virtual machine uh, configuration object but this is not specifically for the static ip address that's why it's not a valid answer coming to the option b this cmd let is actually used to configure subnet settings but it's not suitable for assigning the static ip address to the virtual machine coming to the option c here now while of course you can modify some of the properties in the azure portal setting an ip address typically requires more specific configuration steps that is why i have not taken this one as well this one here which is the sharing center the option d this approach is also not recommended i would say because the azure virtual machine as it can lead to the conflicts with the azure network management so that is why this is also not the correct answer and this one of course finally this cmd let it's actually specifically used to set the static internal ip addresses for a virtual machine in microsoft azure i can give you some documentation for this as well so i hope you understood the question deep question of course that is what you can expect in easy 104 so these kind of questions will be there my friends of course this is a sample practice question but yes please be prepared for similar questions and with that let's move on to the next question question number 243 normally in these kind of questions you will be given with a statement or a problem scenario and then you will be given multiple solutions and mostly there are three solutions given for each such type of question or business scenario and of course you have to select the correct solution given in all of these options so let's read the question it says that you want to implement a microsoft intra id conditional access policy the policy must be configured to require members of the global administrator group to use multi-factor authentication and a microsoft intra joint it device when they connect to the microsoft intra id from untrusted location the solution given is that you access the multi-factor authentication page to alter the user setting does this solution meet the goal yes or no and because this is not the correct solution that's why no is the correct answer so let's look at what are the other solution and what is the correct solution for this business case and now let's check out the second variation of the same question question number 244 the question is exactly the same but let's check out the solution given here so the solution this time is saying that you access the microsoft entra portal 
to alter the session control of the Microsoft Intro ID conditional access policy. Does this solution meet the goal? Once again, yes or no. My friends, this is also the incorrect solution and that's why no is the correct answer. Now let me give you the third variation of the same question and then I will give you the correct answer of course and also the correct reasoning for the same along with the documentation. So here comes the third variation of the same question, question number 245. Let's check the solution given here. It says that you access the Microsoft Entra portal to alter the grant control of the Microsoft Entra conditional access policy. Does this solution meet the goal? Yes or no? And yes, my friends, this is the correct solution. That is why yes is the correct answer. Now, let me give you the exact reasoning so that you can understand all the three solutions given and why we have chosen this as the correct answer. So now on your screen, you can see the question and also the three possible solutions given in the question number 243, 244 and 245. Now, of course, now, of course, this solution does not meet the goal as we have chosen the answer as no for this question number 243. And the reason is that altering the user setting on the multi-factor authentication page does not configure a conditional access policy. It only changes the multi-factor authentication settings for the users. Now coming to the second solution given here, which once again does not meet the goal. And the reason is that the session controls manage the user sessions and do not enforce the multi-factor authentication or MFA or the device compliance directly. Now let's jump on to the third solution given in the question number 245, which is of course the correct solution. And the reason is that grant controls in the conditional access policy can be configured to require the multi-factor authentication and a compliant device which aligns with the requirement to enforce the multi-factor authentication and also a Microsoft Intra ID joint device for the global administrator connecting from the untrusted locations. And that's why the solution given in the question number 245 is the correct solution. And talking about the documentation, my friends, here in this documentation, you can understand how to plan a conditional access deployment so here, first of all, at the beginning, you can understand what are the prerequisites. These are all the prerequisites that you would need. And also in the same documentation, you can also understand what is Microsoft conditional access. So here you can understand what is the conditional access, how it works, what are the common goals. Everything is given in wonderful documentation here. And you will also understand what are the commonly applied policies on these conditional access and things around the same. Then coming back to this documentation, here you will also understand the prerequisite that I just mentioned and also the communication, communicating change, conditional access policy, what are the components for it. So everything is given, you will also understand how to do the user exclusion in case you want to do the same. So please refer the documentation, the links are given in the description box. And I would really encourage all of you to engage in the discussions in the comment sections below and try to engage in a healthy discussion. This will really benefit all of us. All of us are learning. Do watch the previous and the next episode of this series and also the other certification series on both Microsoft Azure and Amazon AWS. And not only that, I also keep releasing multiple videos on free exam vouchers, free certifications, from all the tech giants in the cloud computing world and also in the world of AI and Gen AI. And that's all for today. I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.